Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Sony have just released a new update for their PlayStation 4 system software. And, and, and just for future reference, I, I'm making this video in July of 2025. Now, now this is actually in the middle of the re release cycle for the latest lapse exploit for versions up to 12.02. So, so I'm just making a quick explanation video of, of why you really should not install this or any other updates at the moment. Now, now Sony's updates are designed to fix and upgrade the main console software, but also then to block any vulnerabilities that have been found by the modding and homebrew community. Now this last lapse vulnerability, it did take a couple of years to develop to a working system after the previous PP Pawn exploit was blocked by the 11.02 security update. So, so as each exploit is released to the general public, Sony of course then fixes the code to block it on the next firmware release. So if you update your console, you can lock yourself out of this or the next round of homebrew enablers. Now, now, if you're not sure what homebrew is and my, you, my, why you might want to enable it, then, then I'll give you just a brief rundown. So, so homebrew exploits, they, they break into the main console system software to allow us to run custom software that's not come through the official Sony system. Now, this software covers a wide range of tasks and applications, but the main reasons for using homebrew is to allow games to be run from disk backup files. Now these can either be full retail PlayStation 4 games, um, or by using emulation, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 titles, along with a whole range of other retro consoles such as the Nintendo 64, Sega Dreamcast and almost all of the 8, 16 and 32-bit era consoles. So if you've got a PlayStation 4 console, then you first need to check what software version you're currently running. So if your console while you're doing this offers to install any updates, um, just say no to those. So you need to go into the settings menu and then select the system option near the bottom, then system information, and then you'll see your current firmware version listed. So, so the general advice is to try and keep this number as low as possible until you've got a reliable exploit for a newer version. So the next step, of course, then should be to stop these automatic firmware downloads from being triggered. So from here, if you go back one step to the system menu and then select the automatic download section, in here, just simply turn off all the checkboxes to make sure that the console doesn't try to run any updates. So, so you now have to decide what you actually want to do with your PlayStation 4. Now, now there are some very good reasons to update the firmware. Um, though all of these are overruled if you want to use homebrew applications. So um, you can only activate your console on the PlayStation Network if you're running the latest firmware. So, so if trophies and online gaming is your thing, then you'll really need to stick with an official firmware PlayStation 4 and run the games as normal from discs and PlayStation Network downloads. And of course, updating then is going to be essential in this case. Now these updates don't just fix vulnerabilities, but of course they also add features and bug fixes to the code base. And, and some games and updates do require a minimum firmware version, so you might not be able to play all the content you want to on a lower version. So, so basically, if you have no intention of disconnecting your PlayStation 4 from the PlayStation Network and you're happy, happy buying games to the normal routes, then turn the auto updates back on and get your console up to date. On the other hand then, there are very good reasons of course not to update. So th the lower your system software, the more options you have to exploit the system and enable your homebrew code. So, so the previous point where, where some games need a minimum firmware version can be bypassed uh, in this situation by backported versions of games where the newer software is actually modified to run on the lower versions. Now, if your currently installed version is higher than the latest homebrew exploitable version, then keeping your firmware version as low as possible, so just not updating it, does ensure you get a homebrew exploit as soon as possible. So, so for example, my 11.0 PS4 that I was initially using for my modding tutorials broke down. 
Uh, luckily, I bought it from a company called CEX who have an automatic replacement policy and, and the replacement console arrived, but it was on firmware 12.02, so I couldn't mod it anymore. But as I didn't upgrade that console then, I just kept it on 12.02 and didn't upgrade then to the 12.5, which actually was the current version at that time. Um, I was lucky enough then that this new lapse exploit was able to cover my firmware version. If I had updated, I'd still then be waiting for another year or two from now before an exploit was released for the 12.5 versions. So um, one thing to point out also at this point is to be very careful about what the latest exploitable firmware version is. Now, just to be absolutely clear, at this point in time, the new LAPS exploit will work up to and including firmware version 12.02, not 12.50 or beyond. So please don't get confused when people release tutorials about 12.5 not and 12.52 being compatible with the homebrew enabler code. This is actually a different topic and not a usable exploit. So all these videos are saying is that the code that we want to run after the console has been exploited is already compatible, but we don't yet have an exploit that will work with these higher versions. So, so, so do remember to check what the latest actual exploit is compatible with, not the payload code such as the PS4 HEN or Gold HEN compatibility. So I guess it all really boils down to one decision. D do you want to use Homebrew? If, if the answer is yes, th then don't update, uh, at least not beyond the latest exploitable version, and definitely not if you're already beyond that. Uh, again, um, Choosing the version you want to install, you will need to do that outside of the official Sony update site. Um, if you use the official Sony updates, you will go straight to the very latest version, so, so do avoid that. If you don't want to use Homebrew then, um, well, just keep your console running as normal. Um, turn on your auto updates and, and just keep playing. Um, but do, of course, however, remember that, that when it comes to sell your console, if, if that's what you will end up doing, um, you will get a better price for it, actually, if it's on an exploitable firmware version. So I hope you find this video useful. Um, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more gaming, modding, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And bye for now. For more game programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.